Hi, so I updated my Dynamics 365 finance and supply chain environment to the latest version 10.0.42 and notice this rename item number feature. If we read through the description, we see that now we can go and rename an item number even for item that has inventory transactions. And there's a new log now that we can see with basically the naming change history. So I decided to test it. So previously, when you try to rename an item number, uh, let's say this product right here, you would go to Options, Record Info, click Rename, let's say I specify a new item number, click OK, and then say, well, are you sure? Yes. But then you got this error, it's not allowed to rename the item number. So that's basically stop your attempt to rename that item number. Now let's take a look at how it's done in the new version. So let's go and open our items. So I'm going to grab this release product and I will also do the same thing for the release product master. So this item has inventory transactions. Let's take a look. We see that it has some purchase transaction under accounting. We see some sold transaction under some sales orders. So it has financially closed inventory transactions. So let's go and try to rename it. Go to general tab. We see this new menu item called rename item number. And let's just read through limitations. So serialized or encoded item numbers, if the item number is stored in serialized or encoded formats, such records will not be updated. For example, item number is serialized when stored as batch job query parameter. In this case, the batch job query parameter will not be updated. Makes sense, right? So if you set up any advanced filters on the item numbers, then these filters would remain as is, even after that item is renamed. The second limitation is external systems. The task does not update item numbers stored in external systems. Well, that is to be expected. Plain text usage. If the item number is stored as plain text, it will not be updated. For example, bad job logs may contain item numbers as plain text. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Temporary tables and in-memory fields. These will not be renamed using this task. It will be possible to see such tables as a part of the logs. Not really sure what those temporary tables are. And it tells us that we can see the history under inquiries and reports, item number, renaming logs page. All right, so let's just try to rename this item number 201 and let's say it's going to be 201 new. Uh, I can also schedule this renaming as the batch job. Well, but I'm going to run it right now. Click on OK. I'm going to pause the video until the job execute. In this case, it took less than a minute to execute this job. Now I still see an old number 201, but if I refresh here, I now see a new item number. You can see that the product number that was auto-generated when I created that release product remains as 201. So the product number is not renamed to be in sync with an item number. Now, if we look at inventory transactions here, they all reference a new name right now. And let's go to that invoice sales order, let's say 912. Now we see this new 201 item number. And if we look at pack and slip, for example, lines, line is also updated and mentions a new item number. All right, so looks good on the surface. I wonder what your experience will be with this new feature. All right, so let's go back. And now let's take a look at the log. Here's this item number renaming log. I can click on it. Doesn't contain much information. It tells us the new item number in the left column, previous item number, a new item number, the start and end date for that renaming job, and the duration in milliseconds. So as I said, it took less than a minute. All right, so the lock is quite simple. Now let's try the same renaming on the product master. So here's my D004. That's a product master that has configuration dimension enabled. Uh, let's take a look at inventory transactions. We have a bunch of financially closed and open inventory transactions from all the way back to 2016. Many more transactions compared to the previous item. Go to the journal tab, rename item number. Uh, let's just do the same thing. and run it. So let's just keep track of how long this job will execute for. Took less than a minute to rename 
this item as well. So let's refresh, see new part number, go to inventory transactions. All of them are with a new name. Let's open one of those production orders. Let's take a look at the report as finished journal, for example. Here it is. Mentions a new item number. Now let's take a look at the purchase order, also invoiced. Let's take a look at product receipt lines. Here's that new part code. Great. Now let's take a look at the release product variants for this product master. Let's go to back to product and let's take a look at release product variants. The product variants still have an old part code, so they have not changed. Maybe a big deal, maybe not. Not sure. Curious what you think. Go back. Let's take a look at the log. So the log looks identical to the release product, same fields. And also if we go to our product information management module, inquiries and reports, and we have this item number renaming logs that contain records for all the items. So same log, but not filtered on a specific item number. So overall, first impression, the feature functions quite well, right? Of course, I did not test it in production settings. This feature is still in preview. Uh, there are limitations to be aware of, but given those limitations, if you can work around those, I think this feature can be quite useful. As we know before, it was not possible to rename an item number now with that new feature. That is a possibility. So curious to see what your experience with this new feature will be. Until the next time, take care.